I spotted it on the internet, first of all. Popped down here on my bike, saw an auction board saying I had one week left to consider it. A junkyard with four or five burnt out cars and needles, wasps nests, old sofas. I think when we finally got on it, we just thought, oh my God, what have we bought? Our initial impression was great location, shame about the site. Church Walk's a wonderful example of high quality development that you can do in really constrained um, circumstances. If we're going to deliver the number of homes that London needs, it's not just the big sites that are going to do it. We also need to exploit and use every available space in the capital to deliver high quality housing. I think the scheme has been about trying to kind of grab light and views where you can find them. It was seriously overlooked and overshadowed by the um, building at 45 degrees to it. The challenge of overlooking and being overlooked, um, we got over because the neighbour is at 45 degrees to our back hall. So we were able to do this thing with the geometry. We have a series of triangular rear walls and these walls are always perpendicular so that no windows look directly onto the neighbours and vice versa and uh, we get great light in the views, like this one. The other big issue was the proximity of the site to one of our neighbours and we alleviate that problem by the building stepping right down to be only two metres high in that corner. Acting as developers, we wanted to get as much combination as possible, of course. Um, one way of doing that is to ensure that you get four storeys in where maybe others would get three. Generally, we've mixed low ceilings and high ceilings. So whilst there are some spaces where you sit down, like living rooms and bedrooms, those are contrasted with having spaces where you move about, like kitchens and dining rooms with very tall ceilings. That game enabled us to maximise the value of the site. And it also allows for a great diversity in the kind of spaces and rooms that people are living in, which I think is great. I can have a day at home with the children and, and it's easy. The three levels, which are all quite different, you know, makes it really interesting. So we can spend a couple of hours on this floor and then move upstairs and it's got a completely different feel to it. And then we go out onto the roof terrace, spend some time there. The most striking thing is the light. I mean, even on the dullest day, there is just fantastic light in this house. Not one small thing that is cramped here. And you do feel a sense of space. You don't feel like you're in an apartment. You feel like you're part of a much bigger house. Each of the houses have a south-facing roof terrace. I mean, I particularly love this balcony, actually. Just being able to see out. It's fantastic. I've never once felt like I was overlooked, you know. Uh, the most I've been disturbed is when Annalie and I stick our heads out our windows and yell at each other. <laughs> yeah, you think it's private? Yeah, it is, isn't it? There's Annalie, myself, uh, Ridley, who's just turned one, and Colin, the Welsh Terrier, um, all struggling up and down four flights of stairs, day in, day out, but it's great. We get fantastic views out, great light coming in, the materials externally were really important to us. We have light coloured brick, a, a white lime mortar, white oiled Siberian larch cladding, wildflower gardens. The metalwork is a anodized bronze finish, which is reflective and sparkly. I also love old Victorian and 18th century London walls, which have flushed pointed brickwork with lime mortar, and they look amazing. And I keep wondering why we can't do that. So we did. Our builders were great. I think this is a secret. We've worked with them for over 10 years on lots of projects. So that helps. You have this incredible sense of security as well. So you feel part of the environment, part of the neighborhood, part of the street at the same time, sheltered from it. So it's pretty ingenious. Small tight sites are where architects can really add value because we do have the skills to be able to make the most of whatever assets are there. I don't see any reason why the principles here, you know, the use of light, the building up to the street edge, couldn't apply to lots of brownfield sites who have the same issues of overlooking. What Church Walk demonstrates is four homes on what was previously derelict wasteland. Very, very well designed, wonderful light, wonderful quality, wonderful use of materials. And that's exactly the sort of development that we need to see coming forward.